This is uh, Dr. Bob Breyer. He's known as Mr. Mummy to everybody in Egyptology. Um, deeply into the idea of mummies, um, the science behind it, um, and all the aspects of it. Uh, everything pretty much except for the spiritual point of it. He wanted to look at it more from a science point of view. But uh, what he was able to do here some 20 years ago or more now was to actually make a human mummy. Uh, for the first time in over 2,000 years, a human mummy is made pretty much on the exact way that they had done it in the old days. And so he tried to mimic it somewhat. They got a Caucasian pale cadaver that's lighter skin than even he is. And they made it into a mummy and something very revealing. It's not too long of a, a clip here today, but I do want to show you this. And uh, so let's show you what this guy looked like beforehand. They don't really show too much detail of it, but one version of this shows them actually doing it, pulling out all the stuff and everything. But let's. I tend not to say I'm obsessed with mummies. I know other people do, but I'm interested in all aspects. I have been. Really, I guess I have been obsessed. I admit it. I admit it. I'm obsessed. A little bit. So he did it all with I've obsidian been tools. I've mummification for years about doing it. So I, ultimately, I, I started reading the text on mummification to see what really was known about it. And I thought, the only way to do it is to do it. To really get a cadaver, a human cadaver, and try to mummify it the way the ancient and Egyptians did it. Here is the cadaver. And you can see that skin there. And this is the hand coming down, so. So I want you to know that that's definitely a Caucasian, right? He's going to mummify it, and I'm just going to skip forward through any of this and go ahead and show you what it looks like once they get it mummified and they start trying to wrap it. If you were wealthy enough, you'd have a priest who's wearing a mask of the jackal-headed Anubis, god of embalming. The priest would say certain rituals over the body as it was being wrapped. Look at the color of the skin of this mummy. Frankincense and myrrh would be used. How dark chocolate that is. Look at how dark chocolate that is. You wonder how the mummies get black. Now, just from the natron process itself. The primary amulet used for the deceased was a heart amulet to protect the heart. The only organ inside him now is the heart, and this will protect the heart and make sure the heart doesn't speak out against him in the next world. Let's get one of the magical bandages, and then when it comes out, I think you'll see there's an inscription on it. This has, this right here is the weighing of the heart against the feather of truth in the next world. So it's an appropriate bandage for this area. The magical spells on the bandages aren't really part of my research. I'm interested in the technique of mummification. People just felt we should do it right, do the magical spells too, so we've done that. Uh, and they're accurate. These are, these are How dark his arms are. I say should be on it. Look how black his skin is. is. You saw disease. how pale he was Chimotic earlier. We're going to have to sample tissues to see what, what age does to it, how the dehydration continues. So it'll be monitored carefully. Look at his and face and how dark it is. It. It looks good. We just have to seal the ends. Seal the ends. Look how dark his face is as they cover it up for a final time. It's certainly better than what the average mummy got. There are no shortcuts for this man, which is good. No, it, it, it's, uh, it's good. They did it correctly. Uh, now it's been over 20 years. They keep doing flesh samples to it and checking it out. And uh, the only thing that they're disappointed with is that uh, right after they pulled him out of the natron, they didn't go ahead and cross his arms like his arms would have been as a pharaoh. Uh, because they became such stuck with rigor mortis after that point that you couldn't do it to him and they had to put him to his side. Uh, but uh, again, uh, you see how dark that mummy turns out and that shows you where the darkening of the mummies come. Now you see all the ones with blonde and red hair and long and curly hair and stuff. And we're about through with this uh, negroid mummy uh, thing goes on. Bob will tell you himself that there's only been one that's ever been found and it's a manica parade. And uh, it was the fan bearer and a high official. Uh, it was a eunuch, a castrated eunuch for uh, King Tut, buried with him. And he has his own Book of the Dead. But his Book of the Dead doesn't show a tan Caucasian standing there in front of the gods. It actually shows a Nubian or a Negroid showing you that there is a difference between the two. That whenever they make the difference in the walls and show you pale women and tan-colored men, and black Nubian Negroids, 
but that's exactly what they mean is tan men and their pale wives, and the others are the Nubian Negroids. Peace!